Hi, and welcome to this um, this uh, episode of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell over in Westboro. But this is not about my day job. This is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my seminars at the Northborough Library or other places, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Northborough, that means they want to stay right here. They don't want to go with a Marlboro or or Westboro or to visit their kids in San Diego. No, they want to stay here. So the question is, who are the people they need to know? What are the programs they need to know about in order to do exactly that? So my co-host, who started almost immediately after she started working at the Senior Center at the beginning of COVID, so no one's ever seen her except like on television. No, that's not really true. <laughs> is my friend Liz Tridiak, uh, who has been finding these great guests for us to talk to about all of those people you need to know. And today she's got some folks that are directly relevant to the Senior Center. So Liz, whom do we have today? Hi, Arthur. Um, today we have two very, very important people to myself, to the Senior Center, to the community. We have Muriel Sweener, who is the um, Vice Chair of the Council on Aging Board. And we have Carrie Martinick, who is the President of the Friends of the Senior Center Board. So like you were just mentioning, Arthur, um, I started right before, well, right as COVID hit. Today is actually my one-year anniversary in the role. Oh. And yes. I could, Congratulations. Happy yeah. anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I could not have done it without these two groups, without the COA board, without the friends, without the support that they provide the senior center. This past year would have, you know, I don't even know the words to describe what the year would have been like without these two. So what I hear a lot, Arthur, is what's the difference between the Friends of the Senior Center and the Council on Aging and the Senior Center itself? What's, don't they all do the same thing? So I thought I'd invite Muriel and Carrie on the show to describe what each group does. So if you don't mind, I'll jump right in and I'll ask Muriel, what is the Council on Aging Board and what do people need to know about it? All right, the Council on Aging Board, um is part of the overall senior center. We try to stress this again and again. There are three main components, director, the council on aging, and the friends. And we always have problems with people being able to discern, discern whether, you know, or who is, do, is doing what for the senior center in those capacities. So um, Adrian, who is the chair of the council on aging, Adrian Cost, um, we developed this, what we call the three circles. One, and I have to keep referring to this because I'm new on the Council on Aging now. So the first circle, that's the Council on Aging. The second one is the director. And the third circle is the friends. So um, the council um, is the advisory staff, basically. The director, we don't need to tell you what that involves, but <laughs> you're responsible for it all. <laughs> and um, that includes the staff, the programs, and the building. Lots to do. And then the friends that uh, Carrie is president of, they are the fundraising portion of the circle. So that's the three circles in a nutshell. So, and we all um, meet in other meetings. Carrie from the Senior Center or the Friends Board. She joins the Council on Aging meetings every night to bring us up today, as well as Liz. And um, through those workings, we all are on the same page, hopefully, knowing which one is doing what, but it's all for the same purpose. But we all have our special missions. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Yeah. Thank you, Muriel. So every, every senior center is a little bit different. Some senior centers their, their Council on Aging Board is supervisory, but most, I would say, the Council on Aging Board is advisory. So anytime I need help with policies or procedures or knowing what's going on in the community or what's happening in the world of aging news, the Council on Aging Board is really there to keep me on top of all these topics and help me out with that. Cool. Then. Carrie, do you want to tell us about what the Friends of the Senior Center is all about? 
Yeah, sure. So thanks for that. And thanks for walking through that, Muriel. I think that's really important. And you forgot to mention that you're a past president of the Friends of the Seniors. Oh, Center. yes. So I'm still kind of in that mode from time to time. I have to keep slapping myself <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, so we follow, I follow some great leaders here. But in any case, um, the Friends of the Senior Center, we're a 501c3 organization. And what we do is we raise funds, as Muriel mentioned. Um, we raise money to provide for these programs and services for the Senior Center that's not covered in the town budget. Um, we were founded in 1991, so it's been 30 years this year um, that we've been in operation. Um, just really quickly, I want to take a minute just to mention the board members that we have because everybody works super hard and it's truly the heart of the organization. Um, we have uh, Ron Doucette, the vice president, Henry Squalante, he's the treasurer. Jane Fletcher is assistant treasurer. We have Carolyn, did I say Carolyn already? The so Carolyn Squalante, the secretary. Um, we have Ed Bombard, Jan Campello, Joe Kelly, Jeff Koopman, Forrest Lyford, he does our membership, Martha Mikhailovich, Pat O'Hearn, Jim Priest, Sue Savage. And then we always have um, Adrian, as Muriel mentioned, um, she, Adrian Cost is the chair of the COA. She'll attend our meetings, and Muriel usually comes as well. Did I forget somebody? Did I? I think I got everybody. I just want to ask like everybody. Um, but in any case, we have 423 members and we really rely on the generosity of the community. So that's it in a nutshell for the friends. <laughs> and, and, do the, and do the friends, uh, that, that, that must be the group that's not only doing the fundraising, do the friends also, can, you, you find them solicit, solicit, do you solicit them a lot for contributions also? For the Just, friends board or the members? The, the members. The members, yes, the members. Um, so a part of being a member, I, you paid if you could pay to be a member, and that member, those membership fees actually help as part of our fundraising initiative. So we have, and I, I think at a later point I can talk about the different fundraisers. But one thing we have is uh, membership dues and annual fund, and that really helps to support what we're doing. So you mentioned. Um, the fundraising piece is what's outside of our town budget. So our operating budget from the town includes things like staff salaries, utilities for the building, contractual services to keep this place running, um, a little bit of programming money, things like that. We utilize the friends group to supplement that. So Carrie, would you mind telling us some of the things that you've sponsored in the past? Sure. So I, our biggest thing that we sponsor each year is the Northboro Times. And if you're over 60 or maybe it's 65, you usually get a copy of the Northboro Times. You should get one once a month in the mail. We also send it to some, there it is, we send it to some um, non-residents who are members of the Friends as well. So that's our biggest expense. And what the Northboro Times does is it helps to get the information out there about all these great programs and services that Liz and the Council on Aging is coming forward with, um, just to let everybody know how to engage. Um, some other things that we've done, um, just to highlight a few, we funded last year, over the last 18 months, we funded the strategic plan and rebranding for the Senior Center. So that was a really big initiative to help you know, modernize some of the things we're doing, modernize the look and feel, just make it, um, you know, build some excitement around it and get people, more people beyond just, a, you know, a smaller subset to feel like, oh, wow, this is a place that I can be involved with and come to and all of that. Um, We've helped in, I think, way long ago, Miro, this may have been while you were president, just helping with get the bistro up and running. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, so that's something that I think everybody loves and really misses. I know I do. Um, things like fuel assistance, new equipment. Um, we donate to the veterans luncheon. This, this past year, we just donated to the Hometown Heroes Banners program, um, the, the St. Patrick's Day dinner in coordination with Community Meals. Um, fun things like the piano, pool table, um, ping pong table, the shades in the bistro so everybody wouldn't have to, you know, get blistered by the sunshine in there, but little things like that. And, and, I, and I remember, because once again, I've been watching the, the kind of this, this, the Northboro Senior Center, which is really kind of one of the great examples of the way a senior center can really be a center of the whole community, not just the senior center. Yeah. The, the, the way that the senior center grew, really grew that bistro program by providing the money actually for the initial staffing there. I mean, you say you kind of helped out, but that was that was everything. I mean, you, you started off, you had a great space, but without the people, you know, there would have been nothing. It would, it would have just been a big room with a lot of tables. But as a result of the people, you know, Liz, it's, it's, it's just amazing 
how many people just for for how many people this just became the place to go meet people right mm -hmm. the place to go kind of because the food was good you know and the price was good mm -hmm. and it sounds like it just you know it evolved into something that that has just become a staple but it was really because of the vision of the friends group you know Absolutely. which was really, mm -hmm. pretty wonderful Cru they were they're crucial to us here and everything that we do and you mentioned the strategic plan and the rebranding i think that was a an excellent example of how the three groups, the three rings, if you will, how we work together to create a final product that meets everybody's needs. That I came in at the very tail end of that, but I know a ton of work went into it. That was a huge undertaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now Barry Atkin, who was the consultant um, for that, for the rebranding project and strategic plan, she uses us, Northboro Senior Center, as an example of how things should be done and how wow. well we work together. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah us. <laughs> so, I'll, Muriel, I have a question. If somebody mm -hmm. out there watching wants to join the Council on Aging board, mm -hmm. because I believe we do have an opening, what would you say to someone considering it? I have found myself in this whole process, even through the friends mm -hmm. and now on the council. I mean, it's a very rewarding step to take. It involves work, everything does, but it's an opportunity to get more involved in the community and to meet a lot of different people from a lot of different places. And it's it's great to be able to provide these programs to people that you know you and Adrian put together or get people to do. It's just a very rewarding experience. And actually, most people coming into these positions, I think, or um, groups, don't realize all that is available through the senior center. And it's it's mind boggling. I, as an aside, I just want to mention this. Um, I have a neighbor here where I live who called me a week ago. Um, she knows I've been involved with the friends. She called me because she's now housebound and unable to get out. Her house is a three, three uh, split level. And she said, oh my God, I haven't been to a hairdresser for months. I need a haircut desperately. Is there anybody that you know would come to my house? And I said, well, let me check. So I called the center. I spoke with Jocelyn. And I said, do you have anybody in your files that goes out and do, do, does this? She said, I think I have somebody. Let me check. I'll get back to you. Sure enough, she came up with someone. I called that person and she went to my friend's home and she was thrilled, absolutely thrilled. So a perfect example. And Jocelyn does a lot of stuff like that, I know. Mm -hmm. So, and those are the kind of experiences that make it all worthwhile, you know? Yeah. So. You're really the, the liaison between the community right. yeah. and us here. Yeah. And that's also a really great example of the no wrong door philosophy. You can call us or reach out to a member of the Friends or the Council on Aging Board with any question, really. Right. And we're not just going to say, sorry, don't know. We're, we'll connect you somehow to the person who has the answer. Right. It's not just... We're, we don't leave you hanging. We're going to find it out for you or connect you to the person who does know. And we have to really keep pushing that message out there. You know, right. there's so many people that could use that and don't know it's available. Mm -hmm. it's available. And, and I think, Muriel, you, you know, you make a good point in terms of the, you know, the, the, the people that you meet and stuff if you're doing the volunteering. But the, and the other crucial piece, as I always, you know, Liz, you've heard me say this, you know, the, the thing about Frank and Mary, right? is we're all in this together. We are all in this together. You are a senior. It may be that you come to a point in your life because you're a senior where at some point it may be you really need something. It may be that you're frail. It may be that you need some help. And if you and if you are healthy and, and it isn't a matter of young or old, if you're healthy, then then by participating, you're really just kind of contributing to the favor, the favor bank, you know, you're kind of giving back ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way that, that everybody stays happy, right? That's the way right. all the seniors in Northboro are working together, which is great. Mm -hmm. And I think that th the fact that the three of you are so close is what kind of makes, it's the glue that makes all that happen, right? Absolutely. I know Carrie fields a lot of questions on the Friends um, Facebook and the website. 
questions from community members that maybe should come to the senior center and she happily easily answers them or forwards them to me to be answered. We all just work together so nicely. And that's not common everywhere. <laughs> it's so mm -hmm. nice to have here. <laughs> And so, and so let, let me ask you as an outsider, was, was there anything in the in the in the in the master plan that was like about to happen? Because it was kind of like about to it was happening when COVID hit that you kind of that you're now seeing, oh, now that now that things are kind of easing off, maybe we'll be able to do this or that in the future. Period. There was there was a lot in that in the um strategic plan and a lot of it was um, stretching out our community outreach efforts, which we were automatically forced to do with COVID hitting, right. um, creating a bigger online presence, getting our brand out there. COVID really just kind of it propelled us into um, accomplishing a lot already in that strategic plan. So Carrie, would you mind telling us what fundraisers are coming up? Yes, so um, we actually have, uh, we've been trying to think of ways that we could still raise money um, in light of not being able to get together. Of course, we weren't able to do our country store fair last year, so that's something we hope to get back this year if all goes well and we're um, able to do that. But in the in the meantime, we, are, we have a couple of short-term fundraisers coming up that I think are easy for people to participate in, and I hope that they do. The first is the fund drive, and that is that will run from May 1st to the 17th. The fund drive is in, within coordination with Savers, and what they'll do is they'll donate money to the friends based on the weight of donations, and donations consist of just clothes you're getting rid of, linens, towels, things like that, soft items, even shoes, belts. Just put them right in a kitchen trash bag, tie it up, a white kitchen trash bag, bring it to the senior center. There'll be a trailer there between May 1st and 17th from 10 to 2 p.m. Um, Jan Capella is actually heading that one up if you know Jan or want to reach out and have questions about it. But it's a nice, easy way to help the, fun, the senior center make money. Um, we're talking about a couple other ideas because we really like events to get together. It's so nice to be able to be to not just raise money, but enjoy each other's company. Um, so we're talking about maybe this summer, well, we can be outside for sure, doing some sort of cornhole tournament or a car wash. So I hope people will stay tuned for that a little bit, but we're excited about getting back together and raising funds again. It's still needed, even though the center hasn't been able to be open, it's still important. Thank you, Karen. So is there anything else that, um, that we should share with the community while we have everyone's attention. I do have something, unless Muriel, you have something you want to throw no, out. Go ahead, Carrie. I can't think of anything offhand. Well, one question I get a lot, and I wanted to make sure to point out, was that some people ask me, do I have to be over 60 to join the Friends of the Senior Center? And I wanted to make it clear to people that you really, you don't have to be. There's no age. You can be any age. And in fact, I find that in my particular age group, say from 40 to 50, it's actually a really good time to be part of the Friends of the Senior Center because you may find yourself in the position I found myself where I was trying to take care of my kids and also take care of my parents. And it's a really stressful time in life when you're trying to figure out the right resources for that. And the Senior Center is a really great place to start. Muriel mentioned Jocelyn over there. I know you could call Liz on the phone. And you know, for me, I had worked with the Senior Center director in my situation. And that person was invaluable, just telling me, you know, how to get hooked up to shine, how to get meals on wheels, how to get transportation for your parents if they can't drive so that they can socialize at the senior center. Um, it's, it's for any age. And I, I wanted to definitely make that clear that um, if you're out there and you're, you don't think you are old enough to be on Friends of the Senior Center, um, don't worry, you're, you're <laughs> any age is welcome. So, so that answers the question that I, I was going to ask about Carrie, you know, because I was like, well, no, I, I didn't mean to sound like, like age discrimination, you know, but it was like, I wondered if you were kind of like their affirmative action person <laughs> from, the, from the friends, you know. But, well, I will ask them that. I may be, but. <laughs> but you know, but, but, but it's, it's really an excellent point. So, so for pe folks who might have an interest, Either in the in the council and aging position or in or in the friends, can you, how much of a time commitment is it? You know, because people are always trying to balance off. You know, they they hate to get into something and then find, oh my God, you know, I'm 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 over my head here. So can mm -hmm. you give people a sense of that? 
So to be a member of the Friends, there is no, you, you're welcome to come to all the fundraisers as much as you can, as often as you want. There's no specific time commitment. Um, there is a membership fee. It's very small. There are different levels, I think as low as $5. So it's really easy to be a member. If you actually wanted to join the board, we are a working board. So we do a lot to fundraise and advocate for the senior center. So we really, um, for people that have, you know, we meet the fourth Monday of every month for, you know, an hour or so. But beyond that, we do really work we're a working board, we do the fundraisers. So depending on the fundraiser, you know, there's obviously a time time commitment there, say 10 hours plus or so. Um, but I, I'm not sure that Muriel, if you want to speak to the Council on Aging, that's definitely a different setup for involvement. No, I'm not, um, haven't been on the Council in depth yet to really know what's involved, but I'm sure there are times when we are busier than others. But um, I know there that um, Adrian, is very, very involved, obviously, as chairman, but I don't know what constitutes all that she does in the background with the Massachusetts Council. Mm. I mean, that's a larger connection, obviously. So I'm hoping to learn a lot and willing to dig my feet in and get in there. That's great. That's <laughs> great, Mariel. That's all I can say right now. Yeah, I think it really depends, like Mariel said, on the project and what's going on. I think during the strategic planning process, the Council on Aging Board um, really had a lot of input on that. So they were putting in plenty of hours, but um, in the lulls between projects, I would say it's probably just a couple hours a month. I would say at, at the most. Yeah. 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 And that's actually an appointed position by the Board of Selectmen, I believe. So that, mm -hmm. that's the right panel for that. Mm -hmm. You can always reach out to myself or Adrienne Cost or Muriel Sweener um, if you have any questions about the Council on Aging Board, if you're considering joining. I'm always looking for, you don't have to have any special expertise to join the Council on Aging Board. You don't have to be a senior to join the Council on Aging Board. You just have to have an interest and a passion um, and a desire to advocate for seniors in our community. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Well, this has been a terrific show. I really appreciate Liz um, uh, somehow being able to convince people to come on, and she got both of you to come on at the same show. You know, this is always, this is this is always fun. And once again, this is kind of the point of the show. The point I think of, of the is to really get a lot of folks who would otherwise would otherwise not necessarily know people's faces to be able to kind of attach a name to a face and say, oh well, geez, you know, I wouldn't mind being on the. Council on Aging Board. Muriel seems really sweet, you know, and this is the, these are nice people, and Carrie's a nice person, right? So to ju to just to give people a real sense of it. So so Liz, I really really appreciate your being able to find these people, um, and and bring them on. And I think and and maybe we can ask our folks, the, um, uh, Dana here at at, at uh, the cable station, if we've got any contact information that if people want to reach out. To the friends, you know, or to Carrie, you know, or to Mural, just to kind of, or to you to kind of talk about this stuff, so that exactly. they'll be able to reach out to all this stuff. Great idea. All of these mm -hmm. things. So, so really, thank you so much, both of you, for coming on, and and thank you, Liz. You know, yet again for bringing us some great people, and and hopefully this will attract some folks who may, you know, may have may have in the back of their mind thought, well, what would be a good thing for me to be doing, you know. Yep. People like you, Carrie, who are, who are in that situation, you know, where they're 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 dealing with folk, their folks. And they're like, I really want to make a contribution here. So thank you very, very much for both for coming on. Thank you, Liz, as usual. Thank and you, folks, Arthur. <laughs> once again, we hope you enjoyed the show and the, the contact information will be on. And that's the purpose of this show is to introduce you to these folks. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Thank you very much. Thank you.